Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And what I'm gonna to try to do in this video is get you to understand the basic essentials about square roots. And I'm hopefully gonna be able to do this in around 10 minutes. And uh, this particular video is going to be uh, uh, directed for those of you that might be like in some sort of algebra course. Because square roots, uh, you know, typically could be introduced uh, even in uh, at some elementary levels. Uh, certainly in middle school, you see this simple. Uh, now, I have a question for you. How much do you think you know about square roots outside of the, maybe the basic definition? I'm talking about properties and rules about square roots. Put that into the comment section. I'm going to try to quickly go over this. Uh, this is just, again, going to be a fast introduction. But uh, if you don't know much about square roots, um, I think this video is going to be a nice, quick uh, crash course on the topic. Uh, also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get uh, going here. And effectively, what I wanna do is cover three main uh, kind of topics about square roots. So the first is, what is a square root? Okay, and this is gonna be an informal lesson. So, you know, uh, for those of you out there that you know really know math, really know all the details about this, you're gonna have to forgive me because I'm not gonna give you like full instruction here. If you need um, full complete instruction, and that is important, you might wanna check out like my Algebra One course um, or Algebra 2 course, all depends on what level you're at. Uh, the second uh, thing here that I want to cover is the rules for square roots, okay? The basic properties of square roots that all uh, students, all um, folks doing math should know. And then we're going to talk about how to simplify a square root. I'm going to talk about two important concepts here. All right, so I'm uh, going to try to cover this in 10 minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and get started now. So the first is, uh, what is a square root? Well, you know, this symbol here uh, in uh, mathematics is uh, actually called a radical, but it's, uh, if there's no numbers here, like the cube root like this, no uh, uh, little uh, numbers like up, up here, okay, uh, like so, uh, if you just see a symbol like that, that is a square root. And basically what a square root is saying is it's asking us a question. So let's take the square root of four, right? It's basically saying, hey, what number times itself, okay? What number times itself gets us back to this number, okay? Which is four, all right? So that's what a square root is effectively asking us. Hey, find a number such that when you multiply it by itself, it gets you back to this number. So of course, when you're looking at this, you say, oh, four, the square root of four, that must be two, because two times itself is four. Therefore, the square root of four, okay, is two. Okay, so the square root of four is two. Now, some of you out there uh, you know, might be um, you know, a little bit more advanced, but like, what about negative two? Because negative two times negative two is also uh, a positive four. So could we say that the square root of four is negative two? Well, yes, we could, okay? So uh, we could say the answer here is both negative two and positive two, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make a distinction right now. Unless you're solving uh, polynomial equations, things like x squared is equal to four, this type of thing right here, you just want uh, to have the positive version of this answer. So the square root of four, we're gonna leave as a positive two. This is called the principal square root. We don't need to put in that negative two, okay? We use that negative two when we are solving equations, okay? So uh, again, uh, uh, when you're asked a question about the square root of a number, just leave that positive version. That's called the principal square root. Okay, so here we have a lovely number, two, because two times two is four. What about the square root of 10? Okay, what number times itself will get us back to 10. Well, this is gonna be more difficult, right? Because you're thinking, well, I know that the square root of nine is three, because three times uh, three is uh, positive nine. So maybe this is like maybe 3.1. You're like, oh, I know it's a little bit, it's gotta be a little bit more than uh, three. Uh, so you might be like 3.1, you know, then you maybe uh, will um, kind of mess around with these decimals to try to, 
estimate uh, what number, you know, what exact number, uh, uh, such that you multiply it by itself, it gets back to 10. Well, here is the deal. There is not going to be any one precise number. This, de or, well, I'm speaking about decimals here, actually. There isn't going to be one precise decimal that you can list out because sometimes uh, the square roots of numbers that we find are what we call irrational numbers. In other words, this answer to this is a decimal that goes out. It's what we call non-repeating and non-ending, non-terminating. It goes on and on and on uh, to infinity. So unless you have infinite amount of time, you're not going to be able to write out the entire decimal. So sometimes we can have square roots that were, are what we call irrational numbers, and sometimes we have square roots that are rational numbers, nice, lovely numbers like this. Okay, so you just need to be aware of that, that you're not going to be able to um, find the precise um, exact uh, number value for every single square root that you're going to encounter. Okay, so let's move on now. So that's effectively what a square root is. Let's talk about the rules for square roots. So I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly and I'm gonna show you uh, effectively uh, three uh, different operations. We're actually gonna be covering four. So let's just quickly talk about multiplying square roots. So when you wanna multiply square roots, like in this example, the square root of three times the square root of five, this is super easy. Uh, if we have two square roots and we're multiplying, all we need to do is write one big square root like so. And then these numbers, okay, become factors right here. All right, so in other words, we could just write this as the square root of three times uh, five. Okay, so uh, of course that would be the square root of 15. Now, if you see the square root of 15, you might be thinking to yourself, well, can I break that up in, uh, in terms of its factors? Like, can I break that up or uh, that 15 as three times five? and then actually separate this big square root into two smaller square roots, you absolutely can. So this rule works both ways. It works this way and this way. Okay, this is really, really important uh, concept to understand. But uh, this is uh, our first property of square roots uh, that I'm going to be covering. All right, let's talk about division here. So division kind of works the same way. So here we have the square root of 12 divided by the square root of 3. Now, if your brain's saying, boy, I would love to divide that three into that 12. Well, in fact, you can. We could put this under one big square root like so. And this uh, effectively works the same way like it's multiplication, right? So we have 12 uh, divided by three, which of course is four. So this is really the square root of four, which of course is two. Okay, so if you see something like this, uh, the actual answer is two. Now, if you are doing a problem like this, let's say in your uh, algebra course, you would want to show each of these respective steps. Okay, you, you just don't want to go from here to here. You want to show, oh, this is equivalent to one big uh, square root in terms of uh, uh, dividing um, uh, this numerator and denominator. And then you want to simplify that like so. And then, of course, show your final answer. Okay, so now let's talk about addition. And this also works the same way um, for uh, subtraction. Now, if you're trying to add um, or subtract uh, two square roots, as long as you have the exact square root, like so, okay, it has to be the exact number. Here, in this case, it's the square root of 7 and the square root of 7, okay, right here. We could do this easily by just adding these uh, numbers right here, which are the coefficients. So if I have 5 square root of 7 plus 4 square root of 7, this is going to be equal to 9 square roots of 7. There's 7. Uh, how many square roots of seven are there? Well, there's five here and there's four here. There's nine total. So this works the same way with subtraction. Now, let's suppose I had this problem. Let me kind of erase this. And uh, let's uh, make something else up here like the square root of three. So five square root of seven plus four square root of three. Can I add these? The answer is no. Okay, because these two square roots are different. So in fact, this expression is as uh, simple as it gets. All right, so that covers addition and subtraction, and let's move on to our last uh, little topic here. And hopefully I'm doing pretty good with time. I am covering a lot uh, pretty quickly. Again, uh, if you are like, you know, a little bit overwhelmed, you're like, I need, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot more instruction on this, uh, just check out, again, one of my courses, Algebra One. That's probably the best course that, uh, you know, um, you want to go to because this is, um, again, 
you know, things that you're going to learn at that level of math. So if you're like in middle school math or whatnot, you probably, um, you know, are not familiar with this yet. All right, so now let's talk about simplifying a square root. Now, simplifying a square root is going to bring us back to this rule that we covered right here, okay, with uh, multiplication, right? So remember this rule here? We have two square roots. We can write that under one big square root and then come up with one number, but we can go backwards uh, like this, and this is exactly what we want to be thinking about when we want to simplify a square root. So the um, idea here is you want to look for factors of numbers, okay? So you have uh, 20. You think about 20 like you want to think of factors. Factors are two numbers, two or more numbers, that you multiply and you get back to 20. So 2 times 10 are factors of 20. 4 times 5 are factors of 20. So you want to look for factors with these type of numbers, okay? And then we write these down. These are called perfect squares, 4 9, okay, you kind of see a pattern here, right? 16, 25, etc. Because when you take the square root of these numbers, we don't have irrational numbers. We have these lovely whole numbers like 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So when you look at these numbers, right, let's say uh, we want to simplify the square root of 20, you want to think, are there any perfect square factors uh, in here? And you're like, oh, yes, there is, because I can write the square root of 20 as a square root of 4 times 5. Okay, again, a square root of uh, 4 is a perfect square factor. It's not going to do me any good to write this as 2 times 10. Okay, I want to be looking for factors like this. And now I can kind of pull uh, this one big square root into two small square roots. And again, this is the property that we uh, covered just a minute or so ago. Now I have the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And the whole idea behind doing this is now I can simplify the square root of 4. I know that that is 2. So this is now 2 times the square root of 5, okay? This is really, really important. And um, again, you know, uh, this is these are just basic problems that I'm going over with, uh, uh, with you. And I'm not covering everything, but I am kind of giving you the essentials. Now, this is the last thing I want to talk about. And uh, when it comes to simplifying uh, square roots, uh, sometimes you'll face a situation like this. Let's say you, you do some, um, a problem and you end up with an answer like so. Now, this is a problem in mathematics because right here we have the square root of 3, and this is what we call uh, an irrational number. We covered that, right? This, this is going to be a, a decimal that doesn't uh, repeat and doesn't terminate. So in math, uh, this is a no-no. Okay, you can't leave your answers that way. So we need to fix this up, and the way we're going to do that is by doing something called rationalizing the denominator. This is a pretty easy fix. So whatever you have right here, the square root of 3, all we're going to do is multiply the denominator and numerator by that uh, square root, okay, whatever it might be. Now, of course, I know you are an expert in fractions, so all we have to do now is just multiply across. So 1 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 3, and the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, remember I can write that as one big square root, which is 3 times 3, the square root of 3 times 3, which, of course, is the square root of 9, which, of course, is 3. So we have the square root of 3 over 3. But the um, uh, big um, idea here is now we have a nice, lovely um, whole number here, 3, an integer in the denominator. That's perfectly fine. We don't have an irrational number. So this is not like an optional thing. You're like, yeah, I'll just leave my answer like this. Well, if you leave your answer this way, your teacher is going to mark points off. you got to rationalize, and that kind of comes under the topic of simplifying. Okay, so I'm not sure how many minutes I actually spent. Uh, hopefully, it was close to 10 minutes. That was my objective. But uh, again, square roots are essential to understand in mathematics. And there is a larger topic called uh, radicals, right? Uh, like the cube root or the fifth root, etc. All this is, um, you know, really uh, key uh, to uh, for you to understand to be successful, uh, you know, at math at the algebra level and beyond. But uh, hopefully this quick video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.